Hello, Jacob here again. Today, bringing you some hidden Steam deals. So the Steam Summer Sale has begun once again, and there are a lot of games on Steam on sale. Literally thousands of them. And most of the attention is obviously focused on the big games. So if you look at the Steam store page or the front page, it's kind of stuff like Doom and Fallout and all those kind of games. So today I picked out five games on Steam which have got pretty steep discounts but are kind of hidden away in the depths of Steam and you might have missed them. So yeah, we're going to look at five games, we're going to do a little bit of them, do about five minutes on each game, do a little bit, bit of an impression, show it off and uh, you know, tell you how much it is and all that stuff. So yeah, let's, uh, let's go bargain hunting on, on, uh, on Steam. So the first game is going to be, um, I think it's called Run Jump Gun Jump, so let's uh, get into it. Okay, so this game is called Run Gun Jump Gun. Now, I actually got the title right because I actually recorded this little section a minute ago and then I, I said the title wrong, but it is Run Gun Jump Gun. The title's a bit of a, a, bit of a mouthful to get your mouth around. But anyway, this game is 75% off on, on Steam right now. It is £1.39 and I believe it's $1.99 in America and I think it's €1.99 as well. Developed by 33, that's the name of the developer. This game is also available on Android and iOS as well. So this is quite a cool little game, I thought. Played it for you know about played a, played a bit of it, not a ton of it, but I played kind of a good hour or so of it. And it is a little bit like Jetpack Joyride, it's probably the best comparison, because we're controlling this little character here and he's got this little minigun, and you can shoot down to kind of go up the stage and you can shoot forward as well to destroy obstacles in front of you. And the goal of the game is to, well just get to the end of the level really, there's a, uh, there's, I think there's three worlds in the game and each each world has got 40 levels it seems. And each stage is really really short, you know, sort of about 10 to 20 seconds long each, each stage. But actually beating the stage is quite difficult because there's obviously a ton of obstacles, there's cannons, there's spikes, there's rotary blades, there's all these kind of obstacles to get past. and. The levels are pretty tricky once you get into it. They start off quite easy, because the difficulty builds up as you go along, and it doesn't take long for the game's difficulty to ratchet up. So it's quite satisfying to play through these games and beat the levels, especially seeing as the character's controls are pretty pretty spot on, really. He is, the character's got a nice bit of momentum behind him, and you there is a... Uh, just fe just feels right the way the, character, the character's momentum you know going up and down, how the how the uh, gun, the minigun, kind of sends you up and down and all that. It feels really, 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 um, really, really good. So, yeah, the, uh, they know the, the feel of the character. And also quite like the game's progression because uh, beating the stages, although the stages are hard to beat, you will kind of get there in the end once you kind of figure out the stage layout and a bit, a bit of perseverance you'll get there in the end. But in order to unlock later worlds, you have to collect these little green orbs that you've probably seen me collecting here in the stage. Now, you know, you have to collect a certain amount to unlock the next world. So obviously, you're incentivized to actually go for them during the stage. If you do, if you, you know, you can beat the stage, but then you know, there's not much point beating the stage if you don't actually get the collectibles while you're going through. So I like that aspect of the game. It adds a nice little extra challenge to the each stage, and yeah, you know, gives you, you know, gives you a reason to, gives you a bit of a goal to go for, and also gives you the game a little bit of replayability. If you, you know, if you don't hit your goal, you need to, you, know, you want to go back in and collect a few more of these little orbs. So yeah, this game is uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing. It's you know, amazing. It is quite a straightforward little game. You know, it's only two buttons. You, know, you press one button to go up. You press one button to shoot forward. That's kind of all there is to it, really. But the level design is really, really good. Uh, you know, the game looks really cool. I also really like this kind of rewind as well. When you die, it's really slick how this kind of rewind works. Sends you back to the level, and you kind of have this little light trail behind you. I think that's really, really well done. So I'm quite a big fan of this game. And uh, yeah, I mean, this work worth checking out. Big discount on it, so it's pretty cheap. It's uh, cheap as chips, you could say. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for that one. Not a ton to, not a ton more to say on that one. But uh, it's a cool little game, worth checking out. Seventy-five percent off, nice and cheap. Okay, so moving on to the next one here. This is a game that's called The Dweller. Now this one's actually 90% off. It is normally £3.99, but it's currently 39 pence. 
So it's probably about five dollars down to about fifty cents if you live in America. It's developed by Villainous Games. Now this is a little bit of a puzzle game, and it is quite a simple little game. So basically, you just kind of uh, let's see what we got here. We're controlling this little monster in this uh, archaeological. Well, there's, there's an archaeological dig going on, and our job is basically just to kill the arche um, archaeologists. So you control this little kind of weird kind of shadow monster, and we can only go underground. And we can we can control the boulders, and we can go underground. But once you spawn underground, you kind of you kind of st stuck where you spawn. So you have to use the boulders to kind of uh, navigate the world. And you have to kill, to beat a stage, you have to kill everyone in the stage, basically. So you kind of uh, navigate the world um, using the boulders, basically. And each stage is obviously a little bit, little bit of a puzzle because you have to, you, know, you have to get the um, the order right of how you kill each each one. Because if you if you kill one, uh, you might be stuck. There's not a boulder for you to kind of get to the next part. So if you uh, spawned on the right here. There's this, uh, yeah. You know, there's this big, big lot of rock here, but there's no way to get to the other side. So you have to kind of plan out your your route to to kind of make sure you can actually beat the stage. It's quite a cool little game. I think for the price, it's well, it's well worth checking out for the price because it's basically, you know, it's really really cheap. Um, the game is probably only a couple of hours long, maybe two or three hours long, but it's re it's relatively entertaining. The the uh, characters kind of the little archaeologists are. Quite cute in how they uh, run away from you and how they die, and they kind of die in a big kind of blood splatter. The puzzles are pretty well designed as well. Nothing out of the ordinary, really. They're a little bit, a little bit samey. You know, you are kind of doing this, doing similar things, repeating kind of similar patterns of uh, you know how you uh, beat each stage. You got doing kind of similar things, pushing boulders back and forth, and trying to find the uh, you know the right place to put the boulder so you can traverse up or down the level. And all that kind of stuff. I believe there are kind of other boulders later on. As you progress through the game, too, there are kind of rectangle ones later on as well. Look at the store page, which kind of might be able to uh, create some new little puzzle designs later on. But uh, yeah, it's a neat little game, and I think for for ninety percent off and for you know for a few pennies, this is a cool little game. Uh, I kind of just throw it in here just for as a little bit of a. A little bit of a game which you probably haven't heard of. Cause this is a you know it's just a little indie game on Steam which isn't really all that well known. Uh, you know, cool little game. I liked it. I like. Well, I played it for about half an hour or so. May actually go back and kind of finish it because, like I said, it is a really, really short, short little puzzle game. Cool though. I liked it. Okay, so moving on now, we are now looking at a game called Kalimba. I uh, should have got the price up before I started recording. Oops. Uh, Kalimba. Yes, this one is 75% off, so it is £1.74, down from £6.99, so it's going to be 10 bucks down to $2.50. So I think this one is actually my favourite game that I played during my uh, little exploration of this Steam sale. So this one's actually developed by a studio called Press Play. Now they've actually shut down. They were a micro, uh, published by Microsoft. They were a uh, Microsoft studio, and they made a few little games under Microsoft. Only, and they also made a uh, Max Curse the Brotherhood as well. But uh, this is what they made before that. And this is actually a really, really cool little game. I thought I had a lot of fun with this. So you are, uh, you're controlling these little totems. You can see here we're controlling this little green, green and purple totem on the top and bottom. Now the gravity's actually shifted here. The uh, so yeah, you kind of play for these levels, controlling these two. At the moment, I think later on you get more than two, but I think at the moment we're controlling these two little totems. And you have to you know, traverse the level controlling both of them at the same time. So in this level, obviously we've got, uh, you know, we've got a plane on the bottom, a plane on the top, and we're switching gravity. Now this was actually really, really cool. Um, there are other, other little level designs as well. You can see here we've got this kind of purple and green here, so only the purple one can step in the purple goo, goo and only the green one can go in the green goo. So it kind of makes for some really kind of interesting level designs as you kind of play through. And you hit the blacks if they actually die. So you have to switch gravity then, you know, switch gravity again and switch... You can also switch the uh, green and purple onto the top and bottom as well. So it makes for some really, really awesome level design. Uh, the game looks awesome. Controls really, really well. Really, really awesome levels. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a ton that I can really, uh, really kind of complain about with this game. There's some really cool stuff. Like I said, I really like this as well when you, you know, they kind of hit in the middle and they bounce off each other. That's really, really cool. I like that a lot. But there are, you know, like I said, I really enjoy the kind of invented level design because there are, 
we've got this level these two planes on the top and bottom but there's other levels where they are kind of stacked on top of each other like a totem pole and you have to kind of tra traverse the level kind of jumping with their with them stacked on top of each other and there'll be like obstacles to get past where you have to yeah you, there'll be like a green goo you got the purple on top so you have to kind of jump traverse the purple one over the top of the goo and all that kind of stuff it's really really well done so yeah i had a lot of fun with this game uh, it's kind of a steal, I think, at, uh, at the price it is. 75% off is well worth checking out at 75% uh, off this one. Kind of a shame, really, the studio... Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, yeah, look at that. I like that a lot. And they're kind of bouncing off each other like that. Um, yeah, it's kind of a shame the studio got shut down the way this, because they, uh, they're definitely a talented... Well, they were a talented bunch of developers. And this is a really cool little kind of puzzly kind of platformer that I had a lot of fun with. Getting close to the end of the level. Um, so the levels themselves here aren't, aren't actually that hard to beat, but you get a little score at the end. So we're collecting these little, these little, um, these little triangles. Is the end? They're little triangles. And if you collect them all, you have to collect all of them to get a kind of a perfect score. But also you, to get a perfect score, you don't want to die as well. So you can see here we get this little screen at the end. So all the levels themselves aren't, aren't that hard to beat. It is quite hard to actually get a perfect score on each level. Something to work towards. But that's uh, that's Kalimba. Really, really cool, cute little game. Had a lot of fun with that one. Alright, so we've got game number four here. So this is a game called Serif. And this one is 80% off on Steam, so it's £1.99, down from £9.99. So probably talking like uh, 12 or 13 bucks down to about three or four, I suppose. Kind of around that kind of mark. Now this is a, a little bit of a um this is a side-scrolling shooter. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a roguelike as well, because it you when you there's quite a bit to talk about here, but when you die, you do go back to the beginning and you kind of lose your progress. So this is a, it's kind of a mix of all sorts of different things. It's a, uh, like I said, it is a side-scrolling shooter. It does have these uh, roguelike elements. It also is a little bit of a kind of action RPG-ish kind of thing because you do kind of upgrade your character as you go. So you kind of um, controlling this kind of character here. We've got double, double pistols at the moment. Um, you do collect level weapons as you go. You can get like an assault rifle and magnums and stuff. But you work way through these levels. And each level kind of has an objective. Usually, there's like one kind of tough enemy to kill, or you have to destroy a uh, little crystal or something like that. You work way through your levels. You kill all these uh, demons that are, that are in here. Uh, you actually auto lock on with your weapons, so the uh, the character here will uh, automatically shoot enemies. Well, lock on to them. Obviously, you have to shoot your weapon. But uh, the game's kind of more focused on uh, dodging enemy attacks and also kind of using your abilities. Uh, to kill enemies rather than you know the skill of actually aiming your guns. Now, it doesn't sound it sounds a bit weird but when you're actually playing the game it does actually work quite well especially when there are a lot of enemies about because there are certain sections where there are several enemies that all kind of fighting you at the same time. So we've got a bit of a weapon locker here. So you can change weapons. Uh, you, you make your basic pistols have, have infinite ammo but um, machine guns and stuff you pick up have limited ammo. So working towards uh, the objective here, I think you have to kill a certain type of enemy. Um, so you've got abilities that you can use, you can kind of dodge, it's like a little dodge move that you can use, there's a uh, also like a little knockback ability that we got, and you've got like a little uh, like a damage orb you can shoot out. And there are certain enemies which you can only kill using uh, the X button, so the X button's mapped to an ability which, uh, they had some enemies, once they run out of health they will be stunned for a few seconds, you have to run up to them and use this ability on them to kind of finish them off. But overall, this uh, it's pretty good this game I thought. It's not my favourite one of the bunch, but it's a pretty decent little game. I think for the, especially for it seeing as it's, uh, you know, it is 80% off. Here we go, so you press, kind of lock yourself down, and uh, you have to kind of finish off the X button move there. But it's quite a decent little time. You kind of, you know, you work your way through the levels, killing enemies, uh, you kind of, kind, of, kind of collect XP when they die, and when you beat a level you can upgrade your characters. There's a little bit of a uh, well, you, you level up and you collect XP, which lets you get kind of passive bonuses. And there is also a little bit of a crafting element in the game, so you kind of collect various resources in the level, which means to kind of craft new weapons and kind of various different upgrades. And there's also a um, oh, there's a crystal system as well. So you collect these crystals, and you can use the crystals to increase uh, passive abilities as well. But it, once, you, once you collect, there's kind of tiers of crystals. So once you collect certain number of crystals you can kind of upgrade to the next tier which gives you more stats basically. Um, so yeah this is a it's a quite, a quite a cool little game it's nothing special I suppose because it you know you are just kind of uh, 
This is a little bit mindless. Yeah, we finished the end of the level here, so you kind of beat the level, and uh, you kind of get the stat screen, and then you get the XP going across. I think it's off the upgrades here, so you get, you've got oaths. This is where you put your crystals in the oaths. Here you get different upgrades. You, know, you can increase your health, or you can uh, make yourself take less damage and all that kind of stuff, and increase um, kind of increase how much stuff you get when you level up. What else we got here? Uh, I think you've got stuff that deals more damage as well, so you can, your, your weapons will do kind of um, passive damage over time and various different upgrades. You can kind of spec your character out how you like. Uh, kind of pissing about over the crystals. There we go, I think we're finished now with the crystals, have we? There we go, so yeah, this is the transmuta transmutations. So this is where you can kind of craft various things. Different weapons and stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a decent old game. It is, yeah, it is a little bit mindless. You are just kind of running around, just kind of aimlessly, uh, well, not aimlessly, but kind of mindlessly, kind of shooting enemies. But it's a decent, decent little time. Uh, the way the character moves is quite nice as well. It kind of, she kind of flips all over the place, and you can kind of jump, wall jump, and jump around. And it is quite central because the enemies have various. Well, you kind of enemy has has a, has a different kind of attack. So you kind of want to be on the move all the time, kind of jumping around and avoiding enemy attacks and all that kind of stuff. And kind of crowd controlling as well. It's because yeah, you, if you get mobbed, you will take quite a bit of damage. But the you know you are kind of running around very similar kind of areas, just kind of mindlessly killing enemies. But I had a decent little time playing this one, to be honest. And yeah, I mean I enjoyed the uh, the way the game kind of progresses. You know, it is quite satisfying, you know, beating a level and. Upgrading a character and all that kind of stuff. So this is, this is the crystal. So you, our objective is to kind of destroy this crystal, but this crystal actually kind of keeps spawning enemies in, so it's a little bit tricky to destroy it. Might probably a good idea to use uh, one of your uh, weapons, like your machine gun or magnums or something, which do a bit more damage than the basic pistols. I think you can kind of equip various other um, abilities as well, and stuff. so there's kind of a lot of customization going on here. Uh, you kind of heal up by uh, when you open up chests. So chests you open, which kind of give you XP or sometimes to give you give you a heal drop as well sometimes. And sometimes to give you ammo as well. So there is a reason to kind of explore as well if you want to you know, upgrade. Oh I forgot to mention actually the game has actually a um adapt adaptive difficulty. So once you start leveling up, you see in the bottom left you've got difficulty 2.4. It actually starts off as one. And I think as your character gets more powerful, the enemies get more powerful as well. So the game is difficult kind of ratchets up as you go along. So it's still so I think it's also a fairly decent challenge as well. If you like a little bit of a challenge, you can you can actually set the difficulty at the beginning as high as you want. I think it goes up to seven. I think so. Yeah, you kind of you can kind of choose how difficult you want the game to be, really. So that's uh, that's Serif. Quite quite a decent little game. Like I said, it is eighty percent off. I think for eighty percent off, it's, uh, it's worth checking out if you don't mind a little bit of kind of mindless, a little bit of mindless kind of fun. Not not too bad, but nothing nothing special. But I had a decent little time with this one. Alright, so we're on to the last game here. So this one is called Closure. And this game came out a few years ago, so it's a little bit of an older one compared to the other games I've chosen here. But I picked this one because uh, mainly because it's 90% off. So it's 90% off, 69 pence down from £6.99, so 10 bucks down to 1 buck if you live in America. So this is a uh, little puzzle game which came out in 2012, developed by uh, um, it's called Tyler Galil, I believe, the developer. This is a uh, puzzle game, and it's kind of got a very unique premise. So uh, you have to, you've got these little light sources in the in the, uh, in the level, but uh, the light sources create the ground that you walk on as well. So if there's no light underneath you, you will just fall and die and have to start the puzzle again. So it kind of makes for it's kind of quite a unique little gimmick that the game's got. Hey, you can see it there, we fell down and died. Start again. It's quite a unique little gimmick, and it also just creates some fairly decent little puzzles in the game. Yeah, like I uh, picked this game, like I said, it is a uh, most partly because of the large disc, but also it is, a, it is a pretty decent little game. This one, it's also got a very cool little art style. So I figured this one out uh, fairly quick. This puzzle here, so you have to get through this door, but obviously there's a barrier in the way here. And if we create a little light source underneath this, underneath here, we can walk across. We can get past a little barrier here, so you can kind of see how this game. And it goes about its, uh, its puzzle design. It's mostly about kind of creating 
putting the light sources in the right place in order to traverse the level, in order to get to the door and get to the get to the exit. Now, let's actually get stuck on this puzzle. Let's actually cut this bit out. I couldn't figure this one out. This puzzle here. I had to get across this bit here. Um, I have to I have to go back and try again. We'll uh, we'll cut this puzzle out and move on to the next the next bit. We did get stuck here for quite a while. Let's see where we are. So I go back to the hub board and move on. So you can kind of do the puzzles in whatever order you want. Uh, so you change here to the uh, go back to the hub board and change characters. I think there's like a certain there are different characters now that they have a different kind of puzzle progression. Uh, let's get into it. I think I be, yeah, beat a few puzzles here with this character. And there's not a ton to talk about this game because it's quite a simple little concept. You know, it is a uh, it is kind of you know one little kind of gimmick made into a full game but the puzzles here are kind of good enough to kind of carry the game more than you know it is more than just a, a, a more than just a gimmick I think with this game uh, so you can see how this is tree, tree in a way but we can we can just walk past by not putting light on the tree which is uh, you know this work quite well there are these little spotlights you can kind of move about as well some puzzles kind of rely on kind of having the spotlights in the right in the right place to first level we did actually need to use it there because we got the little, this little orb so the game is you know, a lot of the game is kind of carrying these little light orbs around in order to get get past obstacles a lot of the time. So make up for that door. There are certain puzzles well with uh, with keys. So the door will actually be locked when you come through. You have to kind of connect a key to get through the door. And this is quite cool. These little light sources at the top they actually um, turn off when you get near them. So it makes it you know, a little bit of a different challenge. The game has a typically decent amount of um, variety in it. It isn't just yeah, the game's got kind of got a few ideas going for it. It's not just uh, you know, it kind of takes that one kind of concept and kind of kind of goes in you know, kind of various different directions of it, which is quite nice. There's a decent bit of variety here in the, in the puzzle design. Uh, there's some bits that are quite cool as well. You saw it there where you you put the little orb in like a um, in like a machine and it will kind of traverse, and you have to kind of follow it to get through, which is quite nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's closure. It's a uh, Quite a nice little puzzle game. I said I like the way the game looks. Kind of has a little bit, you know, has a little bit of a limbo kind of look to it. If it's you know very dark kind of game that it looks like. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't much of a story though, know, fortunately. I can tell anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, getting this ball knocking us down here. Now, this is this is where you kind of see these spotlights here. So we're going to move the spotlight around to try and see where we're going. And we've got a key here as well. So this thing's going to go across up here. Look, we have to kind of stand on top of it to get to get where we need to go. Uh, going to the left now. There we go. Get past the obstacle. Unlock the door, and that's that puzzle sorted. So yeah, decent puzzle designs. Um, overall, pretty decent game. Like I said, for I think for. Uh, for the price, this is a, it's a bit of a steal, really. Like, so 90% off is a pretty steep discount for a pretty decent little puzzle game we got here. I had a, I had a decent bit of fun with this one. But actually, uh, it takes a little while to figure this one out. We have to we have to go across the centre, but we, we don't want to carry the wall with us. We have to just kind of get, run across and then get the key on the, on the right. I think I do figure out in the end. So, there we go. So, you jump across, jump, jump again, and then we can uh, grab the key. I think I die again here, actually. I think I grab the key, but the key falls down, and I have to start again. I think. I was a bit impatient getting it back across. Yeah, there we go. It falls down. She starts crying. I have to start again. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, there we go. There's my five picks for the uh, Steam sale, some the Steam Summer Sale 2017. Obviously, there are a lot more games on Steam. There's literally hundreds and hundreds of games that are on sale on Steam. This is, these are just five um, pretty decent games which I thought were uh, worth checking out. But you know, um, you can look for, you, for yourself, but it is quite tedious. There are there is just pages upon pages of discounts on Steam, and it is hard to kind of spot some of the you know the good deals. So that's kind of the purpose of this video, is just to kind of put a spotlight on some maybe a bit more obscure deals because the Steam sales kind of focused on you know Doom and Fallout and all these kind of games, and I thought I'd show off a few little extra little games. So there we go. Uh, I've been Jacob. You uh, this has been a look at the Steam sale. You can leave me a like, comment, dislike, subscribe. 
me do all that bullshit that people say. And I, uh, I guess I'll see you in the next Steam sale in, uh, in about six months' time for some more uh, bargain hunting. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye for now, I guess. Bye!